Major funding for these broadcasts has been provided by grants from New York Community Bank, Amtrust Title Insurance Company, Perfect Building Maintenance, M&T Bank, Customers Bank, Marks Paneth LLP, Capital One Bank, Collins Building Services, Meridian Capital Group. Additional support has been provided by grants from AKA Hotel Residences Corman Communities, Aerial Property Advisors, Amarin Bank, Bank of America Merrill Lynch, Briarwood Organization, Chase Commercial Mortgage Lending, Chase Commercial Term Lending, Citizens Bank, Dime Community Bank, Douglaston Development Levine Builders, Flushing Bank, Friedman LLP, Handro Properties LLC, Handler Real Estate Organization, Hodges Ward Elliott INC, Investors Bank, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, John Casamitidis Red Apple Group, Keysight Capital Partners, Matone Group, New Banks, Newmark Knight Frank, Ocean First Bank, Optimum Window Manufacturing Corp., People's United Bank, Rockefeller Group, Rosewood Realty Services, Stonehenge NYC, SVN CPEX Real Estate Services, Tierra CRG, the Meringo Family Foundation, and these friends. Family businesses. If you read the statistics, it's not easy transitioning from one generation to another. So how does a family work together? How do they live together? Do they ask for advice when they try to sell the business? What do they do? What are the intricacies? So today I've assembled a family who's owned the business, who recently sold a significant portion of the business to talk about the transition of a family business, father and son in the business. My guests include the founder of a company, Norman Sterner, who is the chairman of MHP Real Estate Services, and his son, David Sterner, who is the president and CEO of MHP Real Estate Services. So at 16 years of age, you graduate high school and you go to St. John's and become an accountant. How do you know that? <laughs> Pretty good research. It's 1971. You're selling mutual funds or something like that. You've done your homework. Okay. And you and a buddy of yours who was selling life insurance and mutual funds. That's correct. Decide to put together some money together to buy a building off 9th Avenue and 57th Street. 467, I believe it was. Good enough. So tell me about the company when you started it, what happened during the transition, and how your son over here, who worked in construction, got involved with the business? Uh, we stayed in business from 1971, um, sold off a seat on the stock exchange, got out of the insurance business, got out of the mutual fund business, and we were in the real estate business. It was 1971, and New York City was at the depths of the marketplace, um, an hour away from going bankrupt and not being able to pay the tax anticipation notes. And, well, and what your parents say, your father who's a painter, right? You know, you're, you're leaving public accounting, you know, you work for Laventhal, you're, you're involved, you, wow. and, you, and you say, I'm going to go into this new business. As you just said, the city is in, in dredge. What do your parents have to say? Um, my mother, God bless her, said... Uh, do whatever you want. My father said, if you need me to paint the office, I'll do that. <laughs> Be your own boss. If you're your own boss, you can never get fired. Uh, he, was, uh, he came to this country at 12 years old. Um, the only thing he could do was use his hands, which he did. He actually started being a boxer, a professional boxer, until he got knocked out. 
by too many uh, times. <laughs> once too many, and decided that it was not a good uh, <laughs> for a short Jew, <laughs> for a five foot four Jewish guy that was uh, really a tough guy. Uh, so he became a painter, um, first a house painter and, and, and then a commercial um, building painter. And he did that to the day he died. Uh, and he, he rose, myself and my two older brothers, to um, but do you, be yourself, be your own yeah, boss. So what, what do your older brothers do? Because, you know, they could have gone into business with you, perhaps. They had this successful real estate guy now, Murray Hill Properties over yeah. there. They, they were already, A, in different parts of the country, and, and two, uh, my oldest brother was an accountant with uh, one of the big public companies and didn't like the idea of really working for a living. <laughs> and he's still alive. And uh, my middle brother uh, was uh, one of the great semi-pro uh, tennis players and did whatever he could part-time to make enough money to buy tennis equipment. But a Cooper Union trained engineer. Yeah. When you're living in New Jersey, you have two sons. Did you ever think that you wanted your sons to join the business? No. Uh, it, it never came up. Uh, I fell into it by accident. Uh, somebody walking in in 1971 and said, do you want to buy, uh, you know, 469 West 57th Street, 37 apartments, $70,000. It was actually one of his ex-clients that was under contract with a hard deposit and couldn't find the rest of the money. So it wasn't organic or by design. Yeah. It was by happenstance. Yeah. So when you were growing up, did you ever think you wanted to go into the business? Yes. I, I would, we would drive in for dinners in New York, and I would look around, and he'd point out the buildings he had just bought, and it excited me. I didn't know what, you know what capacity I'd be able to add value, but coming out of college, he gave me the direction and said, go learn something I don't know, and that was construction. What about your brother? My brother really was on his own path. He was a trained lawyer. He worked for Strook, actually one of our tenants now, <laughs> um, for all, about a year. And then was entrepreneurial on his own. He always, he always wanted to form his own businesses and, and was quite successful doing it in but the marina But if he was business. an entrepreneur, real estate was a great entrepreneurial skill. But not for what was available to him. He was the entrepreneur and it was his business and it was growing so, at the so time. So do you think it would have been a conflict if your older brother was involved with, with Norman? My guess is the seat he would want it was his and I didn't want it. I wanted to build the services around the company. We were just owners at the time when I joined Structure Tone. So to build the services, property, project, leasing, and asset management was something I felt I could do. So, so that only added value. And Andy for him. was much more high tech, computerized. So, but you're, you're about 27 when you join Murray Hill Properties, right? 28, yes. But your father at that time has a partner, has two partners, right? One at the time, uh, two, Michael Green as well, correct. Right. How was it to start out working with your father and his two partners? Because I knew both of them, okay, uh, unique individuals, two totally different type of personalities. All three very different. Right. So you have three different divergent personalities working together in a business. And now we have the 27-year-old son. Two points that made it palatable for both of them. One, I was bringing value and adding value with the skill set that they needed. They were buying more half-empty buildings, more neglected buildings, buildings that required capital improvements. And two... He was smart enough to know, you're never going to answer to me. You answer to Michael Green. He's your boss. So we so, never had to interact so other than acquisitions. He um, put a buffer between us. Yeah, it, it had to be. Um, th th as I have said in the past, that I would come home at night and beat up the dog, and I don't own a dog. And my wife would say, you keep doing this, you won't see your grandchildren because your son is not going to talk to you anymore. It's very difficult for a parent to A, have a grown son who has uh, mental capacities and physical capacities to do what you cannot. And he's still your son, so he has to listen. Well, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't have to listen. I did 90% so of the time. It's very, <laughs> it's very difficult to uh, un understand uh, the change in the relationship. See, but the, the, the good and the bad situation is that your son grew, he's been, you've spent 27 years with the company? 24, yeah. 24 years, and during those 24 years, we've had 9-11, we've had a recession, we've had a lot of changes over there. So you were able to learn a, a lot of things in this interim period. Absolutely. I'm blessed that the fact that he is here and that he has joined um, and that he is uh, now taken over the things I don't want to do. So, so when somebody, you know, I hate to say, when baby boomers like you and I 
get baby a little, born? Right. Okay. okay. Get a little older. When you decide that you want to maybe transition, did you ever really want to transition your business, or did you want to keep ownership on this business until, as they say, the day? Can I answer that? Yes. <laughs> he did not want to sell, and I did not want his position. It was that simple. And they told me they don't make pockets in shrouds, so you can't take the keys with you. Okay. It was that time. It, it was the perfect time, actually. We, we've been paid handsomely for the transition. Uh, it gave me the ability not to do everything, not to sit at the first desk at the front door to see who's coming and going, but rather to turn that over to him and just say, okay. Yeah, but today, okay, before you and David and your partners owned 100% of a business. Yeah. Today, you own a minority share yeah. of a business which is owned by a private real estate firm. Private real estate firm. Even though you're the chairman and even though you're the president and CEO, you still report to somebody who's based in Florida mm -hmm. who's controlling the business. You know, we all work for somebody in, yeah. in the end, but it's a different type of thing. We had the choice of who our boss would be, though. And I think that was the luxury that we had. He wanted into Manhattan. We, there's a very high barrier to entry if you don't have an existing structure, infrastructure to, to run and, and buy and sell in this business, in this city. So the leverage we had was we had a brand he wanted. Um, and he knew he didn't have to change much of how we operated as opposed to maybe the size and structure and the type of acquisitions we'd pursue. Um, so we had similar um, aligned interests. Um, we knew what he wanted, he knew what we wanted. We did go out to 25 groups and had eight or nine bidders very quietly, but we didn't pick the best bid. We picked the most qualified and the so, most, so and the most aligned interest. What happens when the four-year employment contract ends and you work there and, you, and you're running the business, but you're running the business with, let's say, an independent board of directors who's watching over you? Mm -hmm. that's, that's what the situation is. Right. Correct. How do you adjust no longer being the grand poopa or the chief working for someone else before, because for 50 years, you didn't really work for anybody. That's correct. The difference, as I tell people, is for the first 50 years, what I wanted, I got, I said, and they did. Now I ask, and if they don't want to do it, they don't do it. So what happens when they don't want to do it? We don't do it. He goes home. Yeah. <laughs> and you kick the... Kicks the dog. No, not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> I, I kick my bank account. I don't kick the dog. But it, it's... You, you reach a point, and, and Saturday night we, we were at the uh, Denver Jewish uh, dance. Larry Silverstein's event. My idol. Right. Okay. My, uh, he's not a mentor, but he's an idol. W was Larry. Uh, you transition out. I'm going to be 80 years old. Um, I still want to work every day. Um, but if they don't want me three and a half years from today, that's fine. Okay. You, you bring up an interesting fact. On my other show, Building New York, New York Stories, I did the life story of Marty Berger. Uh -huh. So Marty discusses when Larry wanted him to join the company. Mm -hmm. He wanted him to join the company to be the president, mm -hmm. but not the CEO. Mm -hmm. Larry said, I'm 82 or 83, I still want to run the business. Right. He kept it for a couple of years, and he really didn't make the transition until he was 86, let's mm -hmm. say. It's very hard to make that transition. It is. Um, but again, as you just said, I've got another contract uh, three more years. Uh, I'll be 82, 83, and um, that transition will now have put David for four or five years in a position of the president the running the company. It is so hard for somebody, especially a child, to live in the shadow of a well-known personage. And simply by 50 years, I'm a well-known personage, not good or bad, but well-known. It's very hard to live in that shadow. Neil lived in that shadow for 40 years. The only difference is, and I've made it perfectly clear, I didn't care about the accolades and I did not care about, I actually said a bunch of times during interviews, I want to be Don't rich, not again. famous. <laughs> Don't say it again. But it's still true. <laughs> I love him as a figurehead. He's still loved by everyone. Um, I like that he takes some of the brunt of um, the, the pressure as far as being the head, and I get to do what I get to do behind the scenes. So we're, we're in a city of New York with eight and a half million people. What do you attribute the success of transitioning your business to David, okay? Because it's still your business, okay? Even though it's a public company. How do you transition it? 
How do you, how do you acclimate yourself to be ready to do that? Things like this. You, you come together with your son and you, you let him be uh, the, the name and the title of the company. Um, you, you, it, it's not a momentary transition on Monday, you're the president and on Tuesday you're not. It, it takes time, but he, he will become the figurehead that, that I have been for all those years. And I accept it, I like it. Um, it's time. Uh, as my oldest son told me, you, you can't hand David the keys from your deathbed, it's not fair. Uh, be there while you're transitioning so that if he needs, and we go through a weekly luncheon where if he has a problem, we say it at lunch. I pick his brain. And if, if I have a solution, he takes it, and if not, not. Um, it, it, is it difficult? Of course it is. How's your brother take care of this? Did he recommend to you, Dad, years ago that you should have transitioned the business earlier? No. Because David wasn't there earlier, okay? Yeah, but he spent seven years at Structure Tone. Uh, Structure Tone, okay? So it, it was, again, a period of him learning and coming in and telling me, we need to do this, we need to do that, we need to change the posture. Um, but Andrew is super successful. Yeah, he He's a serial entrepreneur. He has uh, gone through six or seven uh, iterations of, of what he does now. And sold them all very successfully. Yeah, no, uh, so he... He didn't have the need, A, to live in New York, which uh, he didn't want to do. Um, not only is he successful, um, he lives on a boat, a yacht. Last summer, he traveled from Florida to Maine on a boat. He lives the life that you read about or you dream about. He's more well-to-do than us put together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, He's no. done very well for himself, and, and I think... He's very smart. So what do you recommend to... Not come into the business. <laughs> no, no that, that I understand. But he's, still, he's sitting here, and he is in the business right now. What do you recommend when people say to you, Norman, tell me what was the secret sauce in making the transition a little easier? Love. And, and I'm not being philosophical. Um, he is a clone of me. Um, I love him to death. Um, Ditto. We sit side by side with a single wall between us. The doors are always open. Uh, I know he is capable of bringing this business to the next level over the next five years. And if Banyan decides they don't want a chairman of the board, I'm fine. I, I really am. Um, I, I've been asked to report to Shack Institute uh, and see if I want to teach part-time. Um, Along those lines, I'll tell you one thing we never did. The minute we stepped out of the office, it was over. No matter oh, what yeah. fight we had, no matter how angry we were at each other. And I've quit three times over the 25 years I've been here. So wait, did and you I, quit and leave? or? Oh, or I left the office. Yeah. No, wait. There's quitting and there's quitting. I never, I never went and got another job and went to work for someone else. No. I didn't say somebody else. You know, sometimes you quit and you leave for a, a year or a month. No. Or oh, no, no. It was over in 24 hours. Or, okay, so or a week. These were, these were angry <laughs> moments, as one would but, say. But, but further, we would go out on that same weekend as a family, and it wasn't brought up. We never talked about business, ever. We always made family first. What about the grandchildren? Do you see them... Coming into this business? No, none of them, except possibly my son, because he is getting his architectural degree, but he wants to do hospitality and resi. He does not want commercial office. And he's done internships with large commercial office architects. He loves the idea we're building a hotel. You know, let me do the next one kind of thing. Well, we won't be doing the next yeah, but one. I said it was my first. That was a fluke. You know, over the years, you've raised money from lots of families yep. for your funds. Yep. And many of these families are really family businesses. Mm -hmm. Okay, many of them from the communities, as yeah. the local communities over here. And they have a difficulty. How, how have you reacted and worked with the families who were, who were partners with you, saying, you know, you have David running the business now. Did they upset that you put your sibling in over there? Maybe they would say there was a better opportunity, someone else could have done the job better? 
uh, nobody's ever told me that, and the only family that went transitioning and was still with us was the Carey family, and I, I've never had a word that David's not you. But, but, but I'll go further. I've been working, at, even though he was the senior and he was running the deals, everything we did required my involvement because of acquisition and disposition, and all of what that I offered in those, um, those transactions, my partners, his partners, knew who I was, knew my skill set, knew my capabilities, so I think they got comfortable over the 20 years of being his partner and my partner. Now that you're the president and CEO, what, what are you going to do different than he didn't do? Hmm. Maybe hold. Not s so quick to sell for a quick return, but possibly wait out longer periods of okay. time. Okay, part of it is a difference in age and growing up. Mm -hmm. okay. Part of it, I think it's also the difference in how the real estate market has changed. When we were buying for $25 for bricks or $200 for bricks, the value escalated in short periods of time. We are now getting closer and closer to replacement costs. Once you start to get to that level, these upticks are, are reduced. Do you want to change the operation? Do you want to change the focus of the business? Do you want to go into different areas? Well, we have. We've already started to go into multifamily and resi on a third-party basis for opportunities that we've sourced to, to clients of ours as well as operating. But we've recruited a few resi brokers that have started to do asset sales in that space, and we are presently looking at two deals that are mixed use, commercial and multifamily. So we are starting to look, but I'll go further. We're looking in the Bronx, and we, we never left Manhattan. Of 162 transactions, no, two of them. There was once you, you made Summers, a, a yes. ride to purchase New York, okay? Yes. He sold that very well, thank God, to Carlos Slim. He still owns it presently. Right, but you did make the, 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 the transaction up to up It was a rarity. To Westchester. And he didn't really? love it. <laughs> uh, look, it was triple net leased by the tenant, 100% by Pepsi. Uh, we looked at it as a, a coupon return. When we look in the industry, the real estate industry, there have been some notable families who have had public strife and disagreements. Okay? Terrible. Father and son. Terrible. Uh, mostly father and son, not too many father and daughters. Yeah. Why do you think these families had these difficulties? It's a lack of love. There's a lack of respect. Or entitlement. There's, there's simply a lack between the two people. Right. I, I, think, I think what you just said, lack of respect, is the real key. Now, when you did this transition on the business, take into consideration dealing with the state attorneys. I, I'll, I'll just give you my look at it. Because when I walked in the room, the first time, and it took two, three years to, to get the, the uh, sale done. Um, I tend to suck up all the oxygen. And it wasn't working because uh, I, I, I finally came out and realized that it wasn't working. So I said to David, you go to all of the negotiations. Whatever you do, I'll sign. I never went into a single negotiation with the buyer. Actually, I was pushing the idea of leveraging the brand to get the deep pocket aligned partner because our sixth fundraise was just, we wanted discretion, we couldn't get it. And the way we transact, we need discretion. So ultimately, it was a matter of need. And I think ultimately, we got the best partner out of it because we did run a very quiet, small process. He let me run it all. We picked the people together because we wanted to make sure who we were choosing were people we'd want to work with and be partners with. But we ultimately chose not the biggest check, but the best partner. I never saw the paper till I had to sign it. Never. Not one time. Which is interesting, especially when in, in certain aspects one might consider you a control freak. I, I, I don't believe that. I no, had, no, but... You, I had no reason to be a control freak. I didn't say, you, no, you were a control freak because you ran your own business. Yes, he wasn't that's a freak. what I mean. He controlled it so there was never an argument, yeah. so he never had to be a freak about it. Right. Because <laughs> no one argued with him. For 40 me. years, Neil right, but, and I... But, uh, so you go to a closing, okay, and that's when you read the papers? I mean, at the end? Worse. Just bring the... I, I asked David to make sure I had <laughs> health insurance and long-term disability. Everything else, David? Was if, a perk. <laughs> if you want to do it, because you're here the next 10 years, not me, I'll sign it. And he did. He walked in. He said, I did it. Sign it. And I did. Never walked in the room. And what did your wife say about this? Oh, she loved it. Absolutely loved it. Got him a pretty damn good deal.
Yeah, I mean, look, she worked for over 35 years as a medical assistant. Uh, when we moved into New York part-time, uh, she said, just get yourself more part-time, do more things. And to credit Banyan, by the way, they've been a great partner. Yeah, absolutely. We love them. So what are you doing in your spare time now, now that you're cha chairman, but no longer the chief operating officer? I, of I do two things. I look for property, I talk to other owners, and then I tell David, here's where I'm looking for the money. Other than that, I, unfortunately, I have no hobbies. This has been my hobby for 50 years. Um, I'm trying to find things like uh, maybe teaching at Shack uh, one or two days, uh, a, a day, a week, a month. I don't even know because I've talked to the dean twice, but I've never met him yet. So I bet you St. John's has a real estate division, and they would love to see an old alumni. Maybe. You should uh, check into it. I've traveled to Yale to speak to uh, the real estate guys. I've been asked to speak at Wharton. Uh, I, I speak. I have spoken in the past a lot. Now, I want him to do that. I don't want to be the face of Murray Hill anymore. See, the good part is the face of Murray Hill over the last couple of years, true it's been you, but it's been transitioning, that people have seen it. Yeah. The pictures, the articles mm -hmm. have put David and Norman. That was by design. Okay. It was by design. So my Crystal Apple says transitions work out, especially if they're good people, and I'm pretty certain that this transition will work out. And thanks for being here today. I'm telling Thank you, you it's Michael. respect and love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.